The following is a non-profit fan-based project. Splatoon and Splatoon 2 are copyright Nintendo and Nintendo EAD. Please support the official release. Wait, am I not doing you say? Now, you're probably wondering how this whole story began. Well, let's take it from the top. As I was battling my way through Incopolis, I managed to enjoy a brief vacation at my family's home. But one day, everything changed. I saw a new article on the news, one that wasn't one that wasn't talking about the latest stage layouts. I mean stage rotations. <clears throat> or the latest weapons or updates. Weird. I saw something on TV about the weird hairstyles. You see, I'm not exactly dumb. I read plenty about the tales of the new Squidbeak Splatoon, both in the past and the present. Those new kids that those hair hairstyles, they look too much like Marina for my personal comfort. If only Pearl would actually wake up and get a hint. Understanding that things were getting awkward on the show and arguably and arguably very suspicious, I decided to pay a visit to the fishy alleyway where I often saw Merchant Spike hanging out, as it seemed to be my biggest lead on the issue. Looking back, maybe I shouldn't have. I barely got down there when I was smacked upside the head and lost consciousness. I could only feel needles, fluids, and other things along my body. It went way too fast because time had been dilating in my unconsciousness. When I came to, this happened.
He called me an octoling. I know I'd been an inkling for all my life, but this was just weird. I couldn't remember anything. But I felt perhaps my memory would come back if I just kept it if I just kept working. If I kept trying to find a way out. Little did I realize exactly what happened. And as soon as I woke up, I saw. Truth of the matter is, This wasn't my body anymore. The Calamari Incantation. Hearing those words brought some of my memories back. That was the beloved melody of the Squid Sisters from two years ago. <laughs> Listening to the old man's conversation brought back memories of my studies. He was Captain Cuttlefish, after all. Of course, he would be honest about discussing this material. Apparently, this body of mine had been in battle with Agent 3, who fought the Octarians two years ago. In any case, I should probably do what he says for now. If I can get my body back? If I can get my identity back? Then it will all be worthwhile. At the very least, I remembered how to transform. I guess what genetic memory my mind had allowed me to remember that much. Perhaps the rest of my abilities would return with time. A vault that needed a key. I recall seeing this in other areas. And I definitely remember the architecture of the equipment before me, but some devices were just unusual. The instant the Splattershot Jr. returned to my hands, my mind and body both knew exactly what to do with it. 
So I could not shake that I was rusty after all this time. Maybe with some effort. I'd be able to find what I was looking for. At the very least, I could finish destroying the targets that were evil. as these devices felt, I knew I could not stick around long. <laughs> and just like that, my gun was lost. I would have to adapt to the rules of this twisted underground if I was to make my way out of here. Underground. As I thought those words, I began to remember a song. But I could not remember all of it before something broke my focus. Heed these logs. They are the memories of my times. In what I learned to know as the Deep Sea Metro. Thousand eight Promised Land. I knew this machine was busted when I heard the error slang not found. Ah, so that's what they meant by 10,008. I was this latest applicant. A CQ80 and CQ card. How it was able to store the CQ80, I would never understand. <clears throat> At the very least, they'll help me get out of here. And Agent 8, to think that I would play upon the stage of history alongside this relic of the old Great Turf War? My old self would recall that there would be no greater honor. But as I am now, I felt both revulsed and confused. Or maybe my body was just playing with me. The song I remember. Rest assured, you will hear it. I'll pull you on board, Captain.
And here came our next customer. Visually unpleasant, but maybe time will tell if the visage matched the inside. Kamabo Corporation. I could have sworn that I heard of them, but... And yet, at the same time, the name was unfamiliar. Confusion and doubt swam in my brain as I heard this. <clears throat> Four things. Part of me groaned in silence. Sounded like something out of a video game, all things considered. Let's get these tests over with. So the platform I was on was an equipper. I take it it both supplies me with weapons and takes them back. Presumably not to bring harm upon the other ahem, passengers. A thousand points to start, and I have to pay to start the test. At the very least, it, depending on my performance, I should be able to get back here to restock if the times are dire. Maybe I'll be able to repeat these should times be dire. At the very least, the dummy serves as a nice target to get me better acquainted with the weapon I had selected. Perhaps I should shoot it to make certain my, I understood the function of the weapon I selected. the leaves to be covered. Power eggs. These were more familiar to me, to me than I felt comfortable with. This octoling, its form resembled mine, but it was innately hostile. At the very least, she was not very bright. And the armor. The weapons were familiar to me in more ways than I expected.
Perhaps, perhaps the vantage point they came in on. Way too green for their own good. At the very least, I remembered how to fight. I should save that for when I need it. Hmm. Nice little weapon. That splashdown handy, it never stood a chance. At the very at the very least, this test resembled a turf war battle, all things considered. But I do have to admit the old man has a point. What is wrong with those Octarians? And what is this thing? I got in exchange for this test. A mem cake. Compressing memories into physical form? Maybe by eating it, I could get something back. Were these my memories? <laughs> the radio going on the fritz again drew my attention from my own concerns. The voice shrieking in the radio cut, drew my attention just as quickly, and memories came back once again. Pearl, MC Princess, was she working undercover? At the very least, I recognized off the hook right away. I barely had a chance to react to the old man trying to compete with Pearl before Marina cut them off. Maybe the octolings threw off my focus. At the very least, her compatriot was more composed. Octo Valley. That was where Agent 3 faced off against the Octarians. Like the body I'm in now. We were dragged underground. Perhaps Kamabo Corp was responsible for it. At the very least, DJ Hyperfresh, better known as Marina, could provide tactical support. If only I could talk to her, maybe this confusion could help me out.
It was always good to know that I had some friends on the underground. Maybe I should try rapping in the next area. You paint the turf with graceful strokes, with watchful eye and breathe a sigh. From sniper's perch, I go for broke. Rollout station. Get to the goal in the baller before time runs out. Bounce to me station. Get to the goal with a blaster. The baller was more familiar to me than I thought. Either way, I should probably check it out. Maybe run, I'll run into the others when I arrive. Because I was familiar with the baller, this course would be a piece of cake. So I presumed. That was an embarrassment. That was poorly timed, but not that poorly timed. <sighs> At the very least, I had my own solutions. situation like that demanded care. And just like that, the test was over. Perhaps if I kept going this way, I would find the exit I sought. With tresses pink and eyes a blank, a smile so faint it hides your faint, you slip on past, outfoxed, outflanked. I end my video log here. Maybe next time I'll get to singing. Maybe next time it won't be so tense. Look forward to my next installment.